On paper, the power of the Moto Guzzi V100S Mandelo seems pretty much on par with the competition, but you don't ride a bike on paper. So we had the high spec S version of the V100 Mandelo, which comes with an incredible suite of goodies. But both models come with a full LED headlight with daytime running lights, cornering lights, cornering ABS, cornering traction control, cruise control, four rider modes, a full color TFT, adaptive aerodynamics, and an electronically adjustable screen. Additionally, the S model has fully adjustable Olin Smart Fork and TTX shock with semi-active compression and rebound damping. A journey through the darkness. So there's a lot that we both liked about this bike. Very much so. But I think it mostly comes down to that engine. It's a 1042cc liquid-cooled V-twin with ride-by-wire throttle. Yeah, it looks quite compact and mm. it doesn't feel wide. Like no. it feels a little bit quite a little bit narrower than I thought it would. Yeah. But it does feel like a long bike to me when I was sitting on it. It felt like it was a long way to the like the tank was long and you, the engine felt long. It felt big without feeling bulky, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. Now we talk about power, so it has 115 brake horsepower at 8,800 RPM and 105 newton meters of torque, which is more than enough. And it's about, as I said before, it's about on par with the competition, yeah. with the exception of the R1250 RS, which is about 140 uh, horsepower. So that's a fair bit higher. Yeah. But the power on the open road was absolutely phenomenal. Like it was wonderful when we got this out on the freeway or in through some country roads. I absolutely loved it in that situation. Yeah, 100%. In terms of open road, Man, being able to just put that throttle on, oh, it felt so good. And you felt that power come straight through, no delay, straight in there. And it's not just the power, mm. it's the character in that engine as well. Yeah. And it's the first time you've ridden an opposed twin bike. Yeah. So that's, um, that sort of, I mean, I ride boxes all the time, so you get that boxer wobble, and it's very similar on a guzzy. It does pull to the left. Mm. Um, it's something you take a little bit to get used to but it's something that I find quite addictive. So I, I, I love that about the bike. Yeah, well that whole balancing thing, yeah. it, it is completely different to anything I've ridden before. And I felt it was almost a little bit like when I was taking corners, it wanted to stay upright. Okay. And I was like, oh, well this isn't really working for a cornering sort of um, going through the national park. Mm. But as soon as you sort of trust that bike and you really lean into those corners, mm. it's so good because you you trust it so much that you can be a little bit more free with that and lean more and just have that confidence that like it's going to go back yeah. to its center position. Yeah. I just, I loved it. Well, any opposed twin bike is like that from yeah. my experience. Okay. Um, so yeah, it did feel really balanced. Yeah. The other thing that I really liked about this bike was the electronics. Oh yeah. So it's not something that Moto Guzzi have ever really been known for electronics mm. in bikes, but the electronics on this thing were amazing. Um, the suspension was incredible and it's got 130 millimeters of suspension travel. Yeah. You've got all the cornering ABS and all the things we mentioned before. So the electronic suite, absolutely first class on yep. this bike. And smooth, just super smooth. Yeah. Now, first time you've ridden a bike with shaft drive. Yeah, which I don't 100% know what that difference is still. So it hasn't got a chain. So it's a shaft, yeah. it's a shaft driving it. I, I always describe it like the bike's pushing you along a little bit. Hmm. Um, and the, the, I mean, the key benefit for me is there's no chain maintenance. Yes. So it's just simple. It, it's a simple bike to ride and a simple bike to maintain because you haven't got to maintain that chain all the time. Which I've definitely found from my experience using the wrong lubricant it'll flick it up into the wheel and just destroys my beautiful fluoro clean wheels. <laughs> so for me and you, I think, shaft yeah. drive gets a big thumbs up. Yeah, it was great. So the other thing I really liked about the bike was the looks. So we've got things like the wing. The front end of it looks like the Aprilia Tuono, which I really like. Mm -hmm. Love the daytime running light. I reckon the designer of this bike must have been a Star Wars fan because the way those wings pop out looks like an X-Wing and those tail lights look like an Imperial Star Cruiser. I think it looks absolutely cool. Um, and very, for me, very, very 80s. So it looks like a bit of an 80s muscle bike. Yeah, I, look, I don't mind the looks of the bike. It's, it's pretty decent. We need to go back to those wings though. You like the wings? The wings are super cool and they actually automatically come out if you have it on touring mode. Yeah, so once you hit about 60 kilometers an hour, they automatically come out and it's, I, look, it's just superficial for me, but. <laughs> It's a pretty fun thing to look yeah, at. Yeah, I thought they looked great. As I said, I love the look of the whole bike in general. What about the screen? I, I love the fact that it's electronically adjustable, which is something that the yeah. R1250 RS screen is not. It was just like you had to actually pull that one up. Yeah. So this one's electronically adjustable. I don't think it made any difference. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, the difference realistically is what, like this much from being down to yeah. up? 
Uh, look, it's a cool feature to have having it look electronically go up and down, but... And simple to use, so it's simple yeah. to put it up and down. But I don't think I noticed much difference. If anything, it probably mm. made it a little bit more noisy with okay. it up. Um, so I, I generally left it down. I mean, it's so it's so dependent on how tall you are, where you're 100%. sitting, how you're leaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, look, I found the bike really comfortable. Yep. It was a really comfortable position to be in. It's an 815 yeah. mil seat height, yep. which to me, I could flat foot it easily uh, on the bike. Um, yep. No dramas there. Yeah, and I quite liked just the riding position. Like, it wasn't too far to reach for the bars. Like, I found it a very comfortable ride as well. I, I actually really liked the bar risers. I thought, first of all, mm. they looked really good. Yep. Um, but they did make your hand, your arm position really really comfortable as mm. well. So um, another big thumbs up, both in terms of style and in terms of functionality. So it does feel like a long bike, but it's also quite narrow. And the weight is 233 kilograms wet, which I didn't find it overly heavy. No, neither did I, which is surprising because when you see these bigger bikes, yeah. for me, I find it quite intimidating and a little bit more difficult to move when it's stationary, but I didn't really find that with this bike. So you were fine moving it around the garage? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah, didn't have any issues. Yeah, nice. So most of the switch gear was okay. I thought it looked good. It looked yep. very similar to the stuff off the um, Aprilia Tuono as well. And the TFT was really good. Really found that really easy to navigate yep. and, um, easy and really nice and clear. Yeah. So the V100 Mandela is $28,290 and comes in a couple of colors, like a, a red and a white. And the V100S Mandelo is $32,290 and comes in verde and grigio. Out of those colors, mm. it's a real shame that the S model doesn't come in that red. Yeah, the red looks That incredible. looks cool. Yeah. Um, but if it was me, I'd probably go, yeah, maybe the red, but maybe the verde. I really like that um, traditional Moto Guzzi color scheme. So overall, this is a great bike, but there's a couple of things that we didn't like. Uh, first thing for me was the cruise control button, which felt a bit flimsy. Uh, so to me, I actually struggled with that, just trying to get it on and then flick it off. Once again, I had no issues with it whatsoever. The quick shifter was a little bit clunky, I found. Not really surprising, I've got to yeah. be honest. It's the first ever Gutsy with a uh, quick shifter. And um, I mean, it's like a box of quick shifter. They're not that good. They're not. Every now and then I would get it perfect. Yeah. And I think it's just that the rev has to be spot on for yeah. you to get that smooth quick shift. But yeah. like, otherwise it's it's real noticeable. It's certainly noticeable like first, second and third gear. Yes. Upper gears, it wasn't too bad. But yep. that first, second and third, man, it's as clunky as all hell. It is. But did I keep using it? Yeah, absolutely I did. <laughs> absolutely. Like, it, was, it was still good fun. Now, for me, the other weird thing was the neutral indicator was a bit sporadic. Yes, I really struggled to get into neutral sometimes. Well, it wasn't just that. There yeah. was a couple of times where I'd put it into neutral, it'd still be reading first, mm. and I'd be able to set lights going, hang on, am I in neutral? Release the clutch, I'm in neutral, but it's still reading one. Oh. Um, so that was, a, that was a bit odd, but also, yeah, it was hard to get into neutral. Yeah. And it's not that this bike was brand new, it had done about three or 4,000 K, so it had definitely been run in. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit of a, you know, that's just a Moto Guzzi thing, I think. Um, was it an issue? Not really. I, um, I got used to it. I was, wasn't really that, that concerned by it. Yeah. Um, what about the heat? Yeah, so I took this bike as a commuter bike as well as going through the national park. I will say commuting on it, getting stuck in Sydney traffic, it got hot. Yeah. On, on a warm day, I will say. We did have a couple of hot days when you rode it though. Absolutely, but it, it made it very a very hot day. Yeah. So yeah, look, I would say it probably wasn't the best commuter bike. Um, it just it was just that little bit too wide for me as a commuter bike just to get around traffic. Yeah. And and just being a little bit heavier, I was a little bit nervous about filtering a couple times. Yeah. But certainly, yeah, that, that engine does get very warm. Yeah. Okay, so the other thing was the grab rails. Yep. Now, I normally tie a bag down when I'm traveling. Right. Yeah, camera gear, that sort of stuff. Mm. There was no back in the grab rail. So the I had to pull the bag forward and it was sitting a little bit too far forward and it was sitting in my back. The solution is, if you own one, you'd probably put panniers on it. Yeah. So not, not the end of the world, but just a small thing, like most things we didn't like, just small, reasonably superficial things. Absolutely. Okay, so after living with it for about three weeks, my opinion did change quite dramatically. Yeah. Um, for the first week we had it, we were busy with work, and we both used it as a city bike, which was good, but not great. 100%, me using it as a commuter bike, I came off it being like, it's fine, yeah. it's okay. So I, and I was the same, I was like, yeah, like, it's okay, I don't mind it, that was about a week. Yeah. And then we both took it for, for a run through the National Park, and Teagues, what did you think then? You're right, it completely changed my perspective of that bike. I had such a ball that day going out through the National Park, taking those corners, just again, learning how to corner on that bike. Mm. Oh my 
I had the best time. And again, feeling that power, which I didn't really get to feel when I was commuting, sitting in traffic, I absolutely loved it. And then I took it for a great run down the south coast, a bit down the freeway, then down into Jamboree, Saddleback Mountain Road, mm -hmm. um, into Kiama, um, all those beautiful country roads around there, and had an absolute ball. I mm. uh, met up with a couple of YouTubers that day. That was that was kind of fun. A little yeah. picnic we met up for lunch. Nice. So based on that kind of riding, for me, I, I scored it a nine and a half. I absolutely oh, wow. loved it. And based on that ride, mate, I would 100% buy one. Wow. Okay. I probably wouldn't be as generous. I would give it probably about a seven and a half. Yep. Um, look wise, not my sort of bike. Being mostly a commuter not great for commuting. If I had a spare bike, you know, if I just had a spare bike for taking out, look, 100%, I think it's a great bike, comfortable, great power. So seven and a half is where I'm sitting. Yeah, see, I absolutely loved it. And um, like, I I could easily get over all the little flaws that, that it had um, because it was just such a fun bike. So the other thing is, and it's a bike that you're probably not as familiar with, but remember we did a story with Chris Donaldson and he has a Moto Guzzi Le Mans. Yes. I can 100% see them putting some clip-ons on this and coming out with a new Le Mans. Yep. So they are using this engine in some other bikes. There's a Stelvio which is coming out, which I think is like an off-road version. So it's got style and an unmistakable Gutsy character. I mean, it was a great first Gutsy for me to have tried out. I'm pretty happy with it. I think we need to get you on some of the uh, some of the other models in the range. I'd love that. Yeah, I'd be super keen. Yeah, some of the air cool models. So mm. I've ridden the V7 Special and the V9, mm. and even though I really enjoyed both of those bikes, you couldn't really describe them as modern. Yeah. But the V100S is a completely modern motorcycle, and it is one that I could easily live with. We've just set up a playlist with a whole heap of other videos about Moto Guzzi's here, so check that out. And remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can ride a motorcycle. And that's kind of the same thing. <laughs>